Are there any brush lickers here? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's guilty. Not guilty. I know what I put my brushes in. <laughs> <laughs> Single mob. <laughs> no. Actually, make bridge. You, you find Dan fiddling with his OBS setup, which is a great idea. <laughs> We got two cameras. They're in their usual positions. Yeah. You got all the overlay stuff. Yeah. However, I guess it's work. However, these two cameras that I've got next to each other, because I was going to point one on my face, thinking that you know, this whole faces of Warhammer thing, maybe. Um, these two cameras don't appear to operate at the same time. I know, like, if you've got the same, uh, like I've got two of these uh, Logitech 920s, I know if you plug both of those into the same USB hub, that OBS won't see them, they have to go into different uh, USB topologies for them to be recognised because it looks like it sense. by device name or something. So. Uh, yeah, this thing was a, a cheapy. No. <laughs> Earthquake. I'll have to get the double sided tape off the back of that. Oh, maybe I'll just throw it in the penis it is. Yeah. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. So, one, one should attempt this kind of stuff hours before live streaming, I suppose. But, what the heck? Live on the edge. Live on the edge. Just not quite sure of the edge of what, Glee? <laughs> At the desk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't there a song about living on the edge? I think, remembering back, wasn't this last week, Matty? It sure was. The Wolf Riders? Mm-hmm. Wolf Riders. So, whoop. Oh, I've just knocked him off. They look good. Those bases are impressive. They did look good until I knocked him off. Oh. Are they making it on? No. <laughs> I ah. just broke the glue. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll get the glue back out and stick him back on. Yeah, the, the, um, the base effects are really cool. What are you using for those base effects? So that will have been a ghrelin earth. you got something else in there, haven't you? So... It looks rockier than your regular ghrelin earth. No... What happens is is that uh, I actually let these crackle like really hard. So these went into the dehydrator and the underlying polyfiller wasn't quite solid. So it, it, it wasn't soft, but it wasn't dry, dry. And so when you do the dehydrate on the ghrelin earth with a not 100% cured under, it crackles and curls like really hard. It'll pull the polyfiller up. Believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so 
The idea then is is that you wash them, and these have been washed with a seraphim sepia. And so what it does is it, it picks out the, the edge of the crack a little bit better. This is not focusing. Um, and is so that a ghrelin earth like um, a, a games workshop? Yeah, yeah it's sort of technical a, thing. Yeah, shade. Yeah. So let's. So you, you've kind of got, well, you've got three or four choices, but um, the way I did the orcs, I used the seraphim sepia. The way I did the humans, so I use agrax. Um, actually, I use agrax over badlands, not uh, a ghrelin earth. So, because there's two agrelins, they're the same color ish, sort of. The, the Agrelin Earth is slightly darker, but they have a very different consistency. The Badlands has got chunky, got um, grit in it, whereas the Earth does the curl. So the Agrax over the Badlands gives you a totally different effect than the sepia over the Agrelin Earth after it's crackled. Mm -hmm. And these tufts... These, is that these, called hand wavium? It is. These these <laughs> tufts are actually the handmade ones. I didn't get those off lead bear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm about to do another round of tufts. tufts yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah. I've got to do another set too. Yeah. Which is why this turned up in the mail. Bunch of stuff from materials. Oh, uh, yep. You know, I've been buying all that sort of stuff, bags and bags of that stuff, every time I get into a, a fever pitch of making something like this. Yeah. And the one colour I keep coming back to, especially for the, the desert stuff, but also just for that dead grass slash not overly saturated look, hmm. is that that dried grass I sent you for the railway stuff, oh, yeah. I gave you a, a box of that stuff, I said, I am never going to use this. <laughs> and I kept a little bit, yeah. and now I use it for all of my grass tufts. So, yeah. That's... But I've got all sorts of stuff. I've got white ones and yellow ones, but they're not the same as that one. That old... It was, a, was it a hornby or something? I don't not, know. Whoever does the... the yep. Railway stuff. Yeah, that's the sort of thing I've bought. But that's even... See how yellow that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That older one has got a much... It's got a, a tinge of green in, in, in the other yeah. one to... Dull the yellow there's, a little bit, I think. There's the straw. And they also do a dry field blend, which has got the red and the green in it. Mm. Yeah, I just found most yellows are a little bit too saturated. They're too yellow, yeah. Yeah. These guys also do early crop. That's a nice one. Which has just got the green coming through it. That's a nice colour too. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, plenty of tuft making out of that. Mind you, I um, I got 14 boxes out of Barry last time. So. What do you mean? Uh, a guy by the name of Leadbear does tufts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, does yeah. some really really good stuff cost effective too really really 100% agree so these these are my go-to's the six mil dry grass they are fabulous and they've got the green in them Clee. Yep. but he does like that that's a staple I've used that on 
well I bought six boxes of it so it can give you an idea but he does stuff like this with the, the the arid leafy stuff does flowers does ones with rocks in them yep. yeah so this, yeah I lack on the fl flower front the, I got this one just because look at that <laughs> lavender farm <laughs> I bought That's those cool. primarily because Joe's favourite colour is purple it's not fucking yellow in fact it's the opposite to yellow yeah so yeah it's like it's the arid green leafy tufts so So yeah, a big batch out of him last time. He tried to post it to me. Postage free. I'd send him money for the postage anyway. Didn't leave off your street number, did he? No, he didn't. They arrived very <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah. Yes, well. Uh, anyone can make a mistake. Absolutely. And I imagine we aren't the only people ordering from him. Well, I certainly hope not. No, I doubt it. I reckon he's got a worldwide following. Yep. Judging on some of the Facebook comments I've seen. Mm. And Richard says, good morning, afternoon, evening. Well, doesn't use the word good, but, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's implied. Good evening. You've got Dark Elf Crossbowman, though. No. No? These are human crossbowmen. They look like dark elf ones because they look like they got magazines in their crossbows. Nah, these have From this magazines. angle. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely not then. Just ye olde noble crossbowmen. Not sure what's noble about them. Noble's retinue. They don't react with oxygen. Uh, hmm. On that note, I am going to make a cup of coffee. So I will be back in a minute. Fair enough. I was lamenting that mine had finished. Your coffee? Yeah, my, yeah. Cup of co my jug of coffee. <laughs> I haven't even thought about what colour I'm going to paint these, so I guess I'll start with some flesh and think about it as I paint. Uh, um, quick sneak peek of where I'm up to with this thing, Clee. Yeah, which thing? That ship I showed you yesterday. Oh yeah, show us again. I was um had my head in a uh, storm Sh vermin. Oh Sh nice! Sh oh my god, you've made a lot of progress. This this I did the stern this morning. Is that the front or the back? In the back. Excellent. Come on, <laughs> focus. There you go. Oh look at that! Oh that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's, they're not the this. words I was using. <laughs> that's excellent. Wow, that's wicked. That was brutal. It's like gold on black. Make a mistake. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, here we go. Let's see if I can find my centre. Here we go. I'm on um, nine storm vermin at the moment. Hey! Yeah. The mortar's on the... It's not in the cabinet, it's on the display tape. 
Oh, down on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was going to ask you about lighting. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get some of those kind of room light sort of thing so I could actually set up and take photos outside the booth. Right. Did you? Where did you get yours from? Just off of you, eh? Yeah, right. How's your fuse box looking? Got enough copper jammed in it. <laughs> <laughs> so the stuff I got LED based. So I think they're forty watts a tower. So that's not that bad. All right. That's um, a lot of LED power, though. Uh, what are they? They're. I think they're in the range of eighteen hundred lumen each. Yeah. Okay. And how many do you use to Four. get a good photo? You, oh my god! Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, with one or two, that. you're going to end up with horrendous shadow. Yeah, yeah. You might get away with three, but but honestly, when I paid for them, I think I paid eighty dollars a pair because they came as pairs. Yeah, I know. Then I got to store the damn things, though. It's not so much the cost; it's the, the storing of. Yeah, well, see, I leave mine set up, so they're just annoying to walk around from time to time. But you know, yeah, it'd be nicer. If I could get a, a dual purpose thing, something I could at least use or have elsewhere and then use for this rather than having to have yeah. four lights with their stands and all that gunk. Yeah. The only time it gets really annoying is when the dog's going berserk around the room, knocking them over. But I got that specifically because I was doing video. So, you know, you might be able to get away with a halo. Depends on what do you want to do, photography on, on that display stand. Yeah, so last time I put, to get those dwarf photos, I put that whole piece inside my tent. Yeah. <laughs> and it fits wall to wall and right. it sticks out one end. Yeah. But it limits, obviously, the direction you can photograph it in. Mm -hmm. um, and I still needed to pile on a whole bunch of my LED floodlights. Yeah. Because remember, because it was too still too dark too even dark. with all the. Yep. Um, so I'd like an easier way to be able to take photos of minis on it. It doesn't take me a huge amount of setup. Maybe. Uh, and, and do a little know, bit of research into halos. Yeah. That's those things you put around the, the camera, isn't it? Uh, n No, not the ring lights. Oh, no, okay. The halo. So, um, for hobby desks, uh, what it is is it's a, an arch that goes from one end of the hobby desk to the other, like, uh, uh, like in an arch over the top of the, the desk. Yeah, right. So the underside of it's all lit with LEDs, and depending on how many LEDs you get, it depends on how bright the light is. But loads of people are using them. Like, I've got two um, Bunnings lamps sitting up here, which is effectively a halo, um, but I've also got the two mobile lamps. But it's a thing. Um, people have put 3D designs up that you can print um, individual modules and depending on how big your desk is you just add modules to it to get the curve that you want and then the LEDs go in the modules they plug together electrically but you don't have to do anything as fancy as that you can bend a piece of wood and get some of those LED strips Oh, yeah, so you're just making your own... So it's basically the concept is to have the the, um, the arc of light. That's right. So you don't end up with single points of light. You end up with, you know, multiples. Oh, 
because I don't need to light the whole damn room. I just need to light enough to take a photo. Yeah, that's what I mean. So then you should have enough light coming from the halo. Take a photo of a couple of Take a of photo here. of the miniatures, yeah. And yeah, because I don't need to take the whole thing. It's it's more so that every time I want to take a photo of a mini, it'd be nice to have it on a backdrop rather than yep. not. I should have cleaned these guys up. Here's the third one I've had to pull flashing off. Clearly... I was in a hurry. <sighs> what do you paint, Hoody? Um, barbarian arches. More barbarian arches. More barbarian arches. Some genius put two units of them in a basic army list, and I thought, mm, maybe I'll have to paint some more. So I am. Genius. All right, this is how you sell miniatures. Yep. Note to self, must confer with genius. <laughs> <laughs> But Dan, you talk to yourself all the time. Yes, <laughs> I've considered myself a genius. So it's just these archers and then the two leaders and then that third basic army shall be finished. You're well, three basic absolutely armies. flying through those. Um. Yeah, well, I ain't got much else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. We've got a disp a nail stand that is not happy. All kind of interrupted this morning. that done that because it's, it's around the wrong way upside down miss jane mr squiggle i got that I'm so used to just sticking these Demon World miniatures on the nails and undercoating them. Yeah, I've had almost nothing to clean on all of those dwarves. Yeah. This is actually really surprising. Might have had a cough when he cast it. Maybe. But it might be that that mould is getting tired. Different poses, okay. 
appears to be just that pose. I mean, they cast them individually. I would have thought they had no. a mold, like ten of the same one on it or something. They, they, the whole unit, I believe, goes in the mold. So they, they, they normally they're spaced around because it's in a circle. Mm. They're spaced around the circle in a, a radial fashion. Mm -hmm. And so there'll be multiples of the same figure, but but when they pull it because they pull it off the the sprue, it, it's a sort of um, radial sprue. When they pull it off the sprue, they just chuck them in piles, and then sort them into units. So you might end up with you know multiple figures that came out of the mold, the same location in the mold, in the same unit. Oh, yep. Same packet, yep. yeah. <laughs> There's a photo up of the interceptor box, uh, the interceptor models being sorted into their trays to go into the boxes, and it's this two foot high pile of plastic figures. So Hmm, I remember that one. Hmm. It's all hand sorted. All hand sorted into the trays. Looks like our ship docked. Good. So, we're hoping that the miniatures are in Tennessee by the end of next week. Maybe it'll show up in time for Christmas. Well, it will. It just depends which Christmas. You're talking about Christmas this year. Well, that's the hope. Technicalities of requirements, huh? Mm. See, don't talk to software engineers about things being done by Christmas. <laughs> Because we usually ask which year. So what I'm getting is that the number one requirement to be a software engineer is to be a smart ass. Absolutely. And you, don't <sighs> even, you don't even need to be smart, right? You just need to be an ass. Isn't that right, Clee? Mm, pretty much. Yeah. Probably too late to change career paths. <laughs> it's never too late. But I wouldn't necessarily open yourself up to that level of unhappiness. Unless you want to buy more miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> the purchase of miniatures is a therapy for, as an antidote to the dissatisfaction with your working life. Only goes so far. Eventually, you run out of room. That's <laughs> how I know. That's what happens when you have a career and something you're sick of. <laughs> oh, jeez. I do have some ponies on the way, Clee. <laughs> oh, yes. Excellent. <laughs> Just in case you have to turn up to an, an, a cyber security meeting or something. That's it. <laughs> So I can rage paint.
It's not very exciting. Yeah, there's painting these um, storm vermin, actually. They're a really ordinary model. Are they the plastics or...? Yeah, the plastics. Right. The new clan rats... Ah, <clears throat> uh, well, yeah. Well, you know, the newest clan rat, plastic clan rats, did really well out of the conversion to plastic. Yeah. I mean, well, actually, they were always had plastic models, but well, the, old the newest iteration, the yeah, that was shit. Well, all <laughs> the old plastic ones were shit. Even the, they had the ape hand ones, mm -hmm. the really big hand ones for a while. Um, but the, I really, really like the new, or the current plastic ones. Yeah. But the storm vermin, I don't like. The models are actually really crappy and the detail sucks on them. I'm just looking at a picture of them now. Like they're in the, they're a front back two piece torso and that it almost never lines up on the on the shoulders, down the sides. The the detail on the arms and the skin is horrendous. Like, they've just got knobbly bits that they call fur. Um, and the ones that I'm looking at that they've painted up, the skin's not fur. It's like mutated wart shit. It's skin, there's no fur. Mm. My ones have got, like, fur at the top of his arms and then little bits on his legs and stuff. Um, these maybe ones they're a mid, like maybe they're a slightly legs. old one. I'm yeah. looking at the ones that they're currently selling in the GW store. So, yeah, these might be an an, an older one then. My my only reference is the bloody books, which are all old. Anyone else gets sick and tired of accepting cookies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I generally don't. Your website functions perfectly fine without cookies. I don't have an account with you. I'm not going to fucking... <laughs> it's all European law stuff. They have to ask you. Oh, you know, so this is them. So if you're looking at that picture of them that they've got with, like, I don't know, a dozen of them in the picture, mm. and they've got their leader at the front, and then if you look at the guy to the left of that, they've actually just painted his fur dark yes. brown. And it's this knob, <laughs> look at his knobbly knees. It's kind of just this plastic I gunk. I thought that was part of the armour, not bloody skin. Yeah, no, it's, it's skin. <laughs> and you can see I it. know what you're complaining about now. Yeah. Like, the faces aren't bad on these guys, but if even at that leader, look at his fur around his ear, below his ear. Yeah. It's just kind of this strange, knobbly mess. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, they're not the best models, I don't think. I thought that was part of his helmet. <laughs> yeah, no, see, yeah, it's all the bit... Yeah. I like how they've gone for a pseudo-feudal Japanese sort of look with them. Yeah, the helmets with look the, cool. Yeah, and the the segmented armour plates. and yep. yep. I mean, the shields wouldn't fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> a perfectly good pizza tray. 
<laughs> uh, not for combat, they're for vittles. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> I think they went out of business. Pizza rats. I mean, mm. rats. <laughs> Uh, apparently Chuck E. Cheese still exists. You should just jump on the goal, Richard. I mean, seriously. <laughs> okay. Later. Oh, yeah, they're doing well. I can't believe they're still sa selling the same Scryer Acolytes. Well. Get it right. Don't need to change it. It's a very liberal use of the word right. Well, you know, it's a pretty cool model. Yeah. I wonder if they still do it in metal. No. I don't think they do anything in metal anymore. I think they've all gone to that horrible sear cast. It's not even sear cast, is it? It's that fine cast crud. Fine cast. Do you reckon they're doing? Because they've got for sale on this on on this games on the Games Workshop website. They've got the original rattling gun. Yeah. Oh, and it's the not... original warp fire throwers. Yeah, but they're not casting metal anymore. They're casting that other crap. Yeah, you reckon they've done them in that in that bloody fine cast stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they stop. Like. I reckon I was getting old stock because I got some Middle Earth stuff mm. over the course of the last few weeks and some of it turned up as metal. And I'm like, what? Well, they even... Nah, they aren't doing all of this stuff. They can't be. Look, they've even got a Doom Flayer here. So, no word of a lie, I got a Lictor ages ago. Hmm. It's exactly the same as the metal lictor, but it was in the fine cast. You're kidding. No. Wow. I'm missing one arm from one of my lictors. Oh, really? Yeah. I might have one, so... Oh, uh, I think it's the original old metal arm. You know, the... Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the newer style lictors. It's the old, old style lictors. Yeah. Let me dig through my bits box, because I might have one. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. <laughs> They're a great model, those old lictors. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep, I like them too. Yeah. I don't like the new ones. <laughs> mm, I actually... don't mind the new one, but I do like the old one. Let's see what the new one's like. Because they had an intermediate one, didn't they? Which was an updated one. Uh, I think it was also... There's metal. also the Death Leaper, so... Okay. Then also... Oh, Parasite of Mortex. I haven't seen that thing before. Oh, yeah, the NID's got a few new models last year or the year before. When they got a new codex. Oh, yeah, that licked it. That's not... That's not the one you were talking about. You were talking about the one with blades, not the one with the hookies. Um, yeah, the original old guy, and he's got the two blades that stick out the side of his, his torso and his, his two big metal pincer arms. They're like that, but they're... They face more parallel. Yeah. It is possible. It, 
it is possible that I have a couple or you know wouldn't it wouldn't it just be sod's law that I have the same arm that you've got yeah oh no they're identical aren't they the old ones, I think they're identical. So I think, well, oh, maybe they are. Maybe they actually, are. no, the no. The newer ones have a directional socket on One's them. One's slightly more open than the other, mm. but they you can switch and they, they're not right. e to either side, but I think one was slightly more open than the other. Yeah, okay. The stuff I might have might be too new then. No, I'm yeah, the pretty sure it had a directional socket on it. Yeah, you wouldn't f you wouldn't believe it. I I got a a bunch of bits off someone. Can't remember what it was. Like say a bunch of dwarves or something. Anyway, in the pile of of the stuff was um the missing hands for that. Plague mortar I had. Oh, really? Yeah, I was missing, I think, two of the hands for the, the little rat carrying the mortar. Yeah. And um, anyway, there was two bits and a couple of spare little balls from the mortar in this bunch of other things. So I was like, excellent. Yeah, that's nice. That's a win. Yeah. Oh, you my know God, it's four assist. Yeah. What I was lamenting the other night, was it the other night? Was it last night? Jeez, time's blurring. Um, when I got that Harry Potter miniatures game for Joe, it comes with three Death Eaters. Oh, well, yeah. One of the Death Eaters came with no arms. Oh. So I contacted Knight Models and I said, hey, I bought this. Retail, here's the receipt and all that kind of stuff. Can I have some new arms? Crickets. They never replied. Now, these are supposed to be a premium model. You buy them individually, they're anywhere between $20 and $30 each. It's just not good enough. No, it isn't good enough. So. Not like game, uh, not like Warlord games, man. Oh, their Warlord are brilliant. Their their customer service is just brilliant. Yeah, exactly. And to be fair, workshops isn't bad either. Yeah, I've had no personal experience with with Games Workshop. So, I told you about those broken bases that I got with Ash Wastes. Yeah, I think you did, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're so, like, what's, what the hell breaks a base, you know? It's just like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. A box turns up and the only thing that's wrong with it is the two bases are broken. It's just the strangest thing. Anyhow, contacted Workshop and they said, oh, yeah, hey, um, you actually need to go through the place you purchased it from, but if they can't help you, come back to us. You know, which is... As good as you can hope for. Yep. And Combat Company, bless their souls, had them and just put them in an envelope and sent them. So. I screwed up that order the other day. I told you I ordered those um, Blood Bowl teams. Mm. Turns out I already had one of them. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> So I sent him an email and said, um, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Can you take that out of that order, please? Quite happy for you to leave it as store credit. <laughs> <laughs> and yep, email the following morning going, yeah, no problem. All done. It's all right. Store credit only stayed there about an hour. <laughs> that was all that, that, that um, final buy Harry Potter stuff that consumed that. I blame Joe. She's like, stop buying models. Yeah, but it's the last time buying this Harry Potter stuff. Oh, we better get that. 
She came home last night with three one kilo bags of Jeffers. Well, you've been a good boy. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> it's my punishment. It's like, <laughs> you're going to be walking 100 miles to walk that off. She's been experimenting with ice cream too. I'm doomed. <laughs> Making it? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we got friends coming over tonight for a, a Scrabble night. So those guys are into ice cream, so... Homemade ice cream. Yeah, I've been making ice cream. Yeah. It's delicious. It's been a long, long time since I've had homemade ice cream. Um, been making some cracker mm. ones. Christmas pudding, it was. Christmas, Christmas pudding ice pudding. cream. Mm -hmm. yeah. Goodness See, me. It's a really good recipe, or good looking recipe for a Christmas ice cream slash Christmas pudding style ice cream on the, I don't know, maybe it was the KitchenAid website. Yeah. Quite a complex <laughs> recipe, though. It stands to reason. You got a KitchenAid, yeah. Clay? I do have a KitchenAid, and I have a KitchenAid ice cream maker. I've been using it and loving it to death. It's pretty quick to make ice cream, man. Yeah, I've got Joe a dedicated ice cream machine. Oh, yeah, right. The, you know, the one that you put the bowl in the freezer overnight. And um, Yeah, that's what I got. I got a, a bowl for the KitchenAid. Yep. I just put that in the freezer and then I throw it on the KitchenAid and Bob's your auntie. Well, he was. <laughs> Yeah, that's a joke that's not going to age well in our, um, our children or potential children's future. No, Bob no, may no, soon be your no, auntie. But Bob is my auntie. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm just going to go back to looking at things I can't afford. <laughs> Bob's name is Kate anyway. Well, yeah, true. The question is, do you have a Thermomix? I do have a Thermomix. Thermomix. Uh, okay. Why? Oh, uh, just, you know, you got a KitchenAid. I thought you might have a Thermomix as well. Yeah, they're pretty handy. I All didn't right. want one until I had kids. And, I, uh, I don't know what one of those is. Fill me in. Uh, Thermomix? Yeah. It's a food processor that can cook. Right. It was the world's trendiest appliance for a couple of years, so everyone yeah. had to have one. Yeah. But to All your credit, standard recipes didn't work in them, though. They had to be adapted to, to fit. Yeah. It, look, it's it's like most of those kitchen, uh, cooking style um, single, well, you know, particular style of cooking things, be it a rice cooker or a certain mix or whatever, mm -hmm. they adapt their recipes to do it. But yeah, it's pretty handy. It's it, like it does, its functions are pretty good and it's, I don't know, what is it? It's probably six years old now. It's still going on. It's all right for something that gets used daily. Can You can still get them? Not for sure. Uh, yeah. And used to be some stupid, weird marketing thing where you had to get the rep to come to your house and you can't just walk into a shop and buy it. Some, some yeah, it was a multi-level marketing scheme yeah. as well. Good grief. Yeah, but the product, I, I do stand by the product itself. It costs us like $1,800 they cost or something. Yeah. They're pretty expensive. But... It has lasted pretty well for something that you did pay premium and, for. And, and how big is it? Like, how much bench space does it take up? Same as KitchenAid, pretty much. Right. But I'm not kidding. Like, we use the Thermomix at least 
ten times more than a KitchenAid. Yeah. Like multiple times a day. You know, be it for a quick chopping of something, heating stuff up, steaming vegetables occasionally. Not all the time, but if you're doing a certain recipes or whatever, it's sometimes easier to steam in that than it is on the stove. Got a few things going on the stove, you might steam them in there. All Just sorts of stuff. Tucking this way, tucking that away for future consideration for birthday or Christmas presents. That's probably a birthday present at that sort of price level, but I'm running out of ideas because yeah. I've bloody bought her everything. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't um, use it as much if I didn't have kids, I reckon. Right. It's the whole convenience and quickness and... Yeah. Like, with that thing, if you do some recipes in it, like, I make my pastry in it now because yeah. yeah. it's quicker than making it by hand. Right. Whereas I used to make all of my pastry by hand. Now I quickly whip it up in that. Mm. Takes me, instead of half an hour, it takes me five minutes max. Because, yeah, the other problem is bench space. Because we don't have the, the proper butler's pantry that we had up in Emerald, so... All the appliances <coughs> have to come out onto the bench. So Yeah, it's the same. We that's I have a toaster, a kettle and the kitchen no not the kitchen aid, sorry, the thermomix out, everything yeah. else packed away. It goes away. The thermomix isn't something you'd want to move around no. you pay in the ass. <laughs> My next door neighbour has one. I've never seen them use it uh, because I think it's broken. Because all I can see of it in their kitchen is the stand. The uh, stand's yeah. been sitting there empty for like two years. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's that much of a pain in the ass to move. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they're not. They're not light. Mm. So you were looking at cooking appliances. I thought when well, you said when you were looking at stuff you couldn't afford, you were still on the workshop site. Well, you know how I feel about GW. Mm. Don't we all? Be the yeah, old but... day in hell before I buy something brand new from them. Yeah. I wish I could claim that. But no. <laughs> I've got a bloody pre-order in with them at the moment. <laughs> Not that it's through them. There's a, a bunch of players that do mail order around Australia now that are sitting on that 21% Games Workshop discount. What do you mean, sorry? So, in order to compete as a, a, a non-GW store in Australia at the moment, You've got to you've got to offer the maximum discount you possibly can on a workshop product, which happens to be about twenty one percent. So if you go, um, so there's Emerald Hobbies in Queensland, Combat Company in New South Wales, Mill Sims Victoria. Go to their websites; they're all offering that twenty one percent discount on Games Workshop retail price. Right. I think both Emerald and Combat Company do free shipping over 150. Mill Sims is free shipping over 200. I'm not 100% sure about Emerald though. I don't know how the hell they managed to stay in business in Emerald. Jesus Christ. They do have 10 bucks shipping Australia wide. Right? Oh, there you go. So 
they do the 10 buck shipping. War and Peace games have gone to the $10 shipping nominally. Yep. Well, speaking of War and Peace, you get the same emails from them I do. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Dull coat. Ah, uh, yes, I did see that was back in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a huge mission to find some dull coat for the World War Two stuff I was doing, and it, no one had the cans. No one. Mm. Um. So I actually ended up buying a bottle of dull coat. What is it? 51 mil of dull coat for 10 bucks. So it's pretty cheap and cost effective. Mm. wonder if you could thin it and spray it. I suppose you could. You can add, it's, it's, it's separate, so you shake it up. So there's obviously the, 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 um, the medium and the other whatever it is that does the the dulling, mm -hmm. so you surely could. It's in a... Is it a lacquer? Yeah. What's it suspended in? Is it an alcohol? Or is it a water base? Uh, I don't know. Uh, lacquers are... Uh, lacquers, I don't know what they are. I have lack of thinners, though. Yep. But yeah, it's a it's a little bottle, so it's cheap, heaps cheaper than those cans, and you'll get well a bottle like that, dull coat. Unless you were going to strip your minis, would last you a lifetime. It's like the Vallejo. Primers. Mm. Yeah, you know, I used to think that the twenty odd bucks you paid for a Vallejo oh, primer the was pan. no the the ah oh, the 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 two hundred mil bottles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. used to think that was expensive. <sighs> yeah, the number of bottles that I can prime with one of those bottles versus yeah. the rattle cans at. At thirty bucks a rattle can. Yeah. There's no competition. It it just No. Airbrush priming I think is the one of the best benefits I've seen in miniature painting since I started. Mm. You know? Like it used I remember priming miniatures as a kid. Okay. With Chaos Black and I just you just hated it. You know, hated having to paint 20, 10 or 20 minis black with chaos black out of the pot you know yeah. and I was young I hated it didn't know that I had to thin the paints and stuff so you'd always <laughs> have, you know it was a horrible experience right <laughs> you'd just end up with blobs of porridge well no but you'd end up with a really sticky dry brush and it would yeah. just kill the brush you know more so than the minis um, but and, and then I did have the rattle cans occasionally and they were good but, um, yeah, moving to airbrush is just so nice. You mm. can do it inside, so cheap. Get a much more superior prime. Mm -hmm. I, um... Matt, he's, have you he's ever swearing under his breath. Why? Not, are you not an airbrush priming, fan? He's priming by I'm brush. I'm not an airbrush guy. I do prime by brush. Yeah, right. Look, <laughs> 15 I don't mil, mind, though. <clears throat> it's no issue for 15 mil. Mm. I reckon for 28s, it's a pain. I reckon that would be true. I haven't painted much in 28 in the last 20 years. It's just because at that first coat, you really do need to be careful with how much paint you get on. You need a good couple of coats to get a nice cover. It just adds so much time to the amount of painting you ought to do on a 28. Yeah. I mean, I... I prime while I'm waiting for other things to dry, like texture paints or 
polyfiller. So it's, you know, it's wasted time anyway, so. But yeah, that's, um, yeah. If, um, have you ever tried stripping a miniature that's been painted with those rattle cans? Yeah. Do you know All if they the act- time. And do they strip the paint off those rattle cans? Yeah. If it's the if it's the GW stuff. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. They strip isopropyl alcohol will will eat that paint. Absolutely eat it. Like you know, if you've got you know a Corax white undercoated miniature. Yeah, and no, I'm talking about that chaos black. Yeah, Every even now the and chaos then, black, right? The isopropyl yeah. alcohol will absolutely um, murder it. Yeah, like, right. Really, really effectively strip it. Yeah, I actually do all my stripping using metho. Yeah, the the metho won't touch those. Um, simple green will, will murder it too. Like simple green is really, really, really good for the Citadel paint. What's that? Uh, it's just a cleaning fluid. It's called simple right. green. Yeah. Every now and then I get a miniatures that. You just cannot take the primer off, yeah. this black primer. Yeah, somebody's used the um, the squirt stuff from Bunnings. A, spray, a black spray paint from uh, Bunnings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that white knight squirts just doesn't come off. You've got to use an industrial paint stripper for that. You can't use that on plastic. It's uh, enamel stuff, I think. Yeah, and it, it's impossible to get off. Enamel, yeah. <laughs> I've I've tried even on some of them. I put them in white spirits, thinking yep. it might be um an an, uh, an oil based thing. No, didn't do it. No. Um, I then used oven cleaner. <laughs> yeah, okay, which is a, which is a caustic. Uh, uh, yeah, bicarb based yep. thing. Yeah, and that didn't work. Oh boy! Like, I, it, I I got them off, but only via mechanical scrubbing, yeah. not eating the paint. Yeah. So, you know? really, really interested here is whether you've finally resorted to Drano or not. No. Okay. Because every now and again, to strip some metal miniatures, I've had to resort to Drano, which is a caustic soda bath. And. Do you find, because I, I have a feeling, uh, it's not a feeling, I have a memory as a kid that either me, but I think it was my friend, left minis in something too long, metal ones, and they came out with a rough surface. Yeah, caustic soda. Caustic soda, it is that, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So you do need to be careful with how Oh, it. yeah. Yeah. And for the uninitiated, please don't use hot water with caustic soda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah. I learnt that lesson with a um, bloody ant mound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, caustic soda baths used to be the way we used to. St- strip all the metals and um, I stripped some Battletech miniatures one year and I left them in the caustic soda for four weeks or something and came out and I don't think I binned them but I think I came close they were wrecked yeah, yeah right all the surface was really nastily pitted and yeah that's right that's what happens isn't it yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had this memory of something like that happening, and I'm pretty sure my friend yeah. uh, was stripping minis and, and left him in that. Uh, yeah, too long. But um, with the with the Citadel paint, particularly those rattle can primers, isopropyl alcohol is enough. Yeah, <clears throat> don't need anything else. I'll give it a go on a few of these that I'll yeah. see and, if it fixes it. And you can get simple green in Australia. You, you've got to go to Bunnings, Bunnings for it. Yeah. Bunnings. Yeah. 
Cost of fortune. It's not okay. cheap, but it's an all-purpose cleaner, as Richard has said in the chat. Um, so you can use it for all kinds of different stuff, not just stripping miniatures, but it's pretty good for stripping miniatures. Loads and loads and loads of people in the States swear by it for stripping miniatures. Yeah. But there are just some paints that, that you just, like that white knight stuff, just yeah. don't use it. It's, you know, eight bucks a can. You think, oh, that's so much cheaper than Workshop. Boy, oh boy. It's not a fine grind. It's a, it's a really coarse grind paint. So yeah. you lose detail out of it, and it's impossible to get off. So back when I was a young and tender 14-year-old... It's not that uh, <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> um, for my 14th birthday, I received a copy of Epic 40K. Oh, yeah, excellent. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, I still have some of the dice. And I might have some of the books. Uh, the miniatures are probably gone, though, unfortunately. Because uh, my brother uh, stayed in the house a lot longer than I did. Right. And he didn't like a lot of things that I liked. <laughs> uh, anyway, I primed those wonderful 6 mil Space Marines and Orcs with that White Knight shit. <laughs> 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 they were very, very, very knobbly. That's hilarious. It's terrible stuff. Yeah, I was looking at... Um, I came across some epic stuff earlier. Well, late this week, actually. I was <laughs> bought some Warmaster bases and looked at what else this guy had for sale and he had a bunch of epic... Oh dear. <laughs> it's still weighing very heavily on me. <laughs> it's, I don't know if you've seen them. They're, I think they're in Canberra, the War Library. Maybe no. they're in New South Wales or somewhere yeah. else. Uh, anyway, they've got a whole bunch of epic stuff. The t t trouble with it is it's just ridiculously expensive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and they're selling it. It's all individual. Yep. You know, effectively packs, pretty much. Some of them are still in their packs. Some of them are out, and they're just... You know, I'd rather... If if I could pick up a whole epic army... Yep. I'd be okay, but I don't... It's just buying, like, 20 packs. It's going to cost you a freaking arm and a leg. Yep. But and you have to be cool careful too, there. because it may well be remanufactured. No, these are all the uh, old ones. Are they in like, their original packaging? Some of them are. Most yeah. of them, yeah. yeah Otherwise, yeah. some of them are painted old style ones, you know, right. like yeah. the old squats and things like that. Because there was a heap of people some time ago that were. Remanufacturing it. Really? Yeah. Recasting. There you go. Yeah, no, some of them are in their old epic blister packs. Yeah. Um, I had an epic elder army. I had squats. I swapped it with a guy for some other stuff, and the first thing he did was whack it up on eBay. So I was a bit dark on him about that because he said he wanted it for himself and then next thing I know he sold it off. Yeah, man, I wish I knew what happened to my squat army. Mm. What is it with you and dwarves? Maybe it was the trains. The temperament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the beard. <laughs> Don't paint all with an orange beard, and I've got an orange beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dwarves don't have a Scottish accent, unless, of course, you're Amazon and you're making TV shows. Which is why the Hobbit sent it up with an Irish accent, I can't figure out, but never mind.
out of Brexit. <laughs> what am I up to? I'm up to metal yet. I suppose I have to do the crossbows. Sorry for the earthquake. Don't push the push to talk button to yawn, idiot. <laughs> push to yawn button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an awful reflex that I'm trying to break myself off. I'm also going to take it as a sign that I need more coffee. You need a sign? The sign is yes. <laughs> Some for the rest of the weekend, Clay. Nothing, actually. Try and make some headway on these storm vermin. Storm vermin. Yeah, it's going to rain, apparently, so just planning to do inside things. Yourself? Hi. I want to get that ship of the line finished. I want to get the Hoogamont building's painted and we've got guests coming so that'll be today um, I'm hoping all of that in one day wow well you know we're talking about airbrush priming mm. airbrushing for painting buildings is gold. Yeah. Like, I can do, you know, if, if I do some taping, I can do roofs, walls in minutes. And, you know, once it's all dry, because I'll, I'll bung it in the dehydrator, um, once it's all dry, then it's a coat of Agrax and a dry brush, and they're done. Yeah. So I got that um, La Hay Saint. I had that done in a couple of hours. These are all, well, they're already primed. They've, they've been sitting around primed for months. Oh, yeah. sort of get them done. That um, rigging that ship of the line, though, that's going to take probably four or five hours. So the the farm buildings might have to wait till tomorrow. Like I've got to do the rat lines in the rat line jig and let that dry, then cut them out. What are rat lines? Cool. So, B 
between the masts and the side of the ship are ropes stretched called shrouds and they basically hold the masts up effectively and tied horizontally there's a whole bunch of ropes that on the shrouds which form a ladder for people to climb up those are called rat lines because people look like rats climbing up them you know what i mean yeah so they they use them as a ladder as well they use them as a ladder so all those old um, men of war in order to handle the sails you have to go up couldn't do it from the deck you had to go up so if you want to do any kind of sail change a whole bunch of people had to climb the rat lines into the rigging up the masts to handle the sails and it's incredibly dangerous like occupational health and safety non-existent you know if you fell off the mast and landed on the deck you were de- dead if you fell off the mast and fell overboard you were dead because they weren't stopping the ship to come back and get you because they couldn't sometimes if it was an important important enough person they'd throw a, a small boat out to see if they could come and get you but most sailors couldn't swim so you were dead incredibly dangerous occupation mm-hmm. when you consider that a significant portion of the crew for the fleets for England you know between 1750 and 1820 were press ganged that is press gangs went round to taverns and stuff like that and prisons and, and things like that and they just used to take people out of prisons and take the drunk off the streets and all that kind of stuff next thing that you know you woke up you were in her majesty's navy or his majesty's navy and there wasn't a damn thing you could do about it so brutal times but yeah so I've got a jig to make the rat lines. Oh, make those and let them dry. Literally, to be be honest, I'll make those and bang them in the dehydrator. Half an hour, they'll be dry. I'm going to try a 50/50 dilution PVA water, and I'm going to throw some surface tension breaker in it. Just to see if I can get it to soak into the, the cotton a little bit quicker, the thread. Yeah, that's my sort of standard operating procedure for using PVA is I have a bottle of it. Well, actually, I have a few different bottles here, but mm. they've all been the various stages of dilution depending on what I want them for. Yeah. And they all have a, just a drop of uh, dishwashing liquid. Hmm. Maybe use some Windex. Um, if you've got a big bottle of Flow Aid, that'll also do the trick. Yep. A couple of drops of that. Yep. Flow aid's more expensive than the Windex, so I use the Windex. <laughs> I don't care about the blue tint because they're going onto black thread, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, but I'd like to have that miniature rigged and based today, just to get it out of the way. It's so I thought, oh, this will be a fun project. <coughs> it's done my head in. And I've got a unit of men-at-arms of Dol Amroth here that 
need to be painted at some point. So maybe I'll get to start those tomorrow. If you were going to list out everything you had that needed to be painted, Go we'd ahead. fill the next three streams. <laughs> Only three? <laughs> I'm only talking well, about six the... hours to rattle off stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm only talking about the stuff that's whip on my desk. I'm not talking about stuff that's still in cabinets and whatever. Like this was stuff I got out last weekend to prep to paint this week. This was my to do list for this week. You know, you're blowing through starter armies so but uh that, <laughs> you're not uh, actually jealous of that are you uh no not n there's Good. no jealousy there it's i'm oh. i'm impressed it's it's a totally different emotion but it's uh I set myself a goal for the week. I haven't hit it. It's simple as that. It's because that Man of War has taken five times as long as I thought it would. Well, you got to break these things up. Otherwise, you get burnt out. Yeah. Well, that was the reason for doing the Man of War. because <laughs> <laughs> I've painted a lot of 15mm miniatures in the last two years. Smaller scale. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we're in the order of, what, 800 figures or something? I stopped counting. Like, that's an estimate. Last time I counted, it was 600, so... But, yeah, it's... Pretty much essential. Other... Just having other things to do, you know? I have a... I'm listening to Lord of the Rings again at the moment, so I have a, an interest in painting it, playing it. Jeez, wouldn't playing it be nice if I had anybody in the local area that was interested at all? You play the game of it? No, never. I own it all. Never seen the table. Yeah. Have you read the rules? No. no. I've got them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't read the rules either. Richard seems impressed at 600 plus minis. <laughs> You'll have to ask to see photos of the cabinet someday. <laughs> If you've got an Instagram account, go look for Dan Payne's Miniatures on Instagram. You can get back over that. It's pretty well documented. Um, and that 600 plus, which is more like 800, that's just Demon World. That's just Demon World, yeah. Um, Never mind everything else. <laughs> I, set, I set myself a goal in 2019. Um, this was before I really got involved in Farsa at all. Um, I'd been watching some stuff from Gorilla Miniatures games and um, Ash Barker's a stay-at-home dad and he makes his living by posting YouTube videos every day. He's a content creator, he does a bunch of reviews and um, by all appearances he's a good guy. Anyhow, um, he said something about uh, over the course of the, the previous year he'd painted a thousand vigors because... He, he doesn't play with anything unpainted, so if he's doing bat reps or anything like that with any of those systems he deals with, he always paints the miniatures. If he's doing let's plays on how to start and everything like that, they're always painted miniatures. So he obviously sets aside a, you know, a reasonable amount of time per week to get through that sort of backlog. But he said over the course of the 12 months he'd paint a thousand figures, and I'm like, hmm, okay, there's a goal. So 2019, I got through just on 1,200 figures while holding down a full-time job. I don't think I'll ever manage that, like, ever again. And they were 
they were the majority of those were 28s too, by the way, not 15. That includes that 430 figure Roman army. So the stupid things <laughs> we 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 set out to achieve. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, in the meantime, <laughs> another two years have gone past. Ashbark is probably still hitting his thousand figures a year. Uh, and I took on line manager roles. Reading rules is a lot easier than writing them, Clee. Oh, I totally, totally understand Yeah, man, the structuring, the order of... Just getting the wording right so that people don't get the wrong idea. Generally fine if you need people to not get the wrong idea. you got to throw a you dickhead in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Then you have to explain what a dickhead is. <laughs> Did I tell you the story, the rehabilitation story, Maddie, about how I got back into this? Because after my marriage had come apart, I got rid of all my wargaming stuff. So this was circa 2008, 2009. I got rid of it all. I needed money. I had no interest in it. Like, I had no interest in life, basically. Um, and then when I got sick in 2015, I was stuck at home. I couldn't do anything. And I still had... Did I, I still had some painted Eldar. I think that was the stuff I hadn't gotten rid of. Vehicles. And I had one I hadn't painted. So I got it out and finished it. And enjoyed it. Now you're broke. Now I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need too many dots in between <laughs> those two things. And you, if we kept all the stuff from when we were kids, yeah, we wouldn't be broke. No. I've turned over a complete wargaming collection twice now. I've just... Another friend of mine keeps telling me about how oh, he's sick of this, he doesn't want to do that, he's going to sell it and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, you'll regret it. Three years time, you'll be like, mm, I had all of that. I really wouldn't mind doing that again. Then you buy it all. <sighs> for three times as much as you sold everything else for, so... would be nice to play a game. Nice. I have to sort something out, Clee, because I reckon my video rig is probably good enough now. So, 
Yeah, we should do it again. I already threatened Matty to teach him how to play Alpha Strike Battletech. Which I'm still on board for. Yep. I was going to ask today how your um, teaching games of um, Interceptor went last weekend. Well, uh, there's funny stories there. I'm not sure which participant would necessarily find them funny, though. So, you've got Andy and Don. So, Andy's project manager, she's and cat herder. So, she's the one that sort of arranges things, um, helps projects along. She was also you know, running the, ostensibly running the, the booth at Gen Con. Um, role player, not a war gamer. Most of the folks at Faster Games at the moment are role players, not war gamers. Um, and then you've got Don, who's the artist, also not a war gamer. So neither of them really had any idea about what fighter ship combat tactics might look like so we're starting at absolute zero with these guys which is fine so basic concepts were, were okay you know they were um starting to get the hang of the maneuvery template sort of stuff and andy decides that she's going to push the boundaries and not in a little way so she manoeuvres this fighter, pushes its envelope way too hard, fails, fails miserably, so this thing's now floating in space with broken drives. Don rolls the fighter up behind it, blows it away. Next turn, same thing. Andy pushes a fighter, blows his engines up, floating in space, Don parks a fighter behind it, blows it to kingdom come basically happens three times. Uh, All I can think is that I'm, I'm glad she's not my uh, wife driving my car around. <laughs> yeah. Um, by the third time, I think she figured out that she, she, she knew she probably shouldn't be doing this, but she did it anyway. That... Um, Don rolled the signal biggest damage roll I've seen in the game to date. Whereby he got nine successes on an attack and Andy managed to block two of them. So we had seven rolls on the fighter damage table. <laughs> that is by far the biggest damage roll I've seen. That is incredibly lucky. It is. And and what's even more was there wasn't a single ten rolled in that. Wow. So. That was going to be the next question. How many turns? Well, he rolled no. two nines, so I mean it died anyway because there was two nines and one of the other um, meant that three locations got hit, so the fight died. But on the final turn, um, he had one one opportunity to take out Andy's last fighter before she got it off the board because it was a spirit. So heaps of performance to just disappear if it needed to. And he only rolled two successes, but she didn't roll a single success to defend it. And he rolled two tens. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it was just one of those games. Um, oh, the dice gods left on. Yeah, absolutely. And he's like, well, I'm keeping these dice. These dice are great. I'm like, yeah, well, you've probably used absolutely every ounce of luck out of them for the next six months, but never mind. It's like, I was gobsmacked at just how successful. And, like, and he's like, I, I can turn my camera on. I can show you. And I was like, I, I have no reason to suspect that you're lying. You know, it's... Yeah, it happens that way sometimes. But, um, you know, if Andy hadn't been pushing the envelope quite so hard on those fighters, she wouldn't have ended up in a position where 
she got blown away. Yep. Perhaps yeah, there's a, quickly. There's a time and a place to dance with the black. That's right. And and it isn't directly in front of, of a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what What was that? That was a 10 dice attack. Yeah, they, 10 dice attack and he rolled 9 successes. He's just like, how? Anyhow. I'd be checking the balance on those dice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, he took a... They were the, the dice that came in the box that he took with him from Gen Con. Exactly. Yes. That will probably be one of the first things I do. What's when that? I get mine, to test the balance of the dice. Right. You can ask for a refund if there's shit. <laughs> no, because mm. then I'll just get store credit. <laughs> <laughs> for more unbalanced dice. Well, yeah. Um, no, 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 just to see, you know, because you can, you know, you mm-hmm. float them in salt water and if they keep coming up consistently on one or two numbers, then that's the way they are. Yep. And if you want to make your own unbalanced dice, second in the microwave will generally do it. <laughs> right. What happens if you leave dice in the microwave too long? Do they explode? Or do they just melt? Never tried. Don't intend to. Hmm. No sacrificial dice. No sacrificial microwave. Yeah, right. We've all done CDs, haven't we? No. I have. No. That is spectacular. What do you mean? Put a CD in a microwave. What happens? Well, the electricity arcs across the foil layer. (laughs) Right. So you end up with this nice electricity pattern across the plastic they make oh. great coasters but you have to turn the microwave off as soon as they spark because if you leave them on you burn the plastic and that's not a nice smell neither is uh, microwaving eggs <laughs> you used to have a flatmate who did that <laughs> eggs still in the shell yeah. He thought he could hard boil them real quick. <laughs> they just explode. <laughs> Fuck off, they do. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I spend an hour cleaning the microwave. I suppose male flatmate cleaning. Mm, probably not likely. Not to cast racial aspersions or anything, but he was Pakistani. Right. And he got married at the age of 18 oh. because he needed a wife to take care of him. Yeah. This seems to be the way it goes. It's a, a cultural <laughs> yeah. thing there about the man gets taught to go out and do his, things. His slave his guts out and the wife, the, the women get taught to look after them. Hmm. Nice enough bloke, to be honest, but mm. like to microwave eggs. I mean, it wasn't a one-off thing because he did it in the office as well as at home. <gasps> Have you not learnt your lesson? Apparently not. He's also the only person I know who's uh, walked into an automatic Sliding door, glass door, right? You know, full glass. Yeah, he's managed to walk into it at a squillion miles an hour, mm. hard enough to crack the glass <gasps> before the whole thing is opened. Well, didn't open at all, he mm. alleges. Yeah, how. 
He's okay. broken the doors mm. by walking into them somehow. And these are automatic doors. They mm. just... Yeah. Weird. Sounds like a case of impatience. Or not paying attention. Yeah. Well... A joke at the time being that it takes someone special to manage something like that. Are you sure he was trying to walk through them and not just lick them? (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of which, the dog does it. So she's figured out that if she licks the window and then wipes it with her paw, it makes this nice squeaking noise. Squeaky noise that she can't hear. Well, no, she can hear. She just has no directional hearing. She doesn't know where the right. noise is coming from. But, like, I'm, I'm sitting here the other week and there's this squeak, 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 squeak. And I'm like, where is that coming from? I look out the window and here's the dog licking the window and wiping it with her paw. Squeak. Squeak, 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 squeak. And I'm just like, you are special. So, I was saying to Cleet earlier, while you were rebooting, Mm. that we were expecting, well, told to expect thunderstorms this morning. When I come down, there was a little bit of cloud cover overhead. Mm. Now, it looks like it's full, fully clear sky. Right. Oh. So, where's your thunderstorm gone, then? Same place it went every other day. Right. A figment of the bomb's imagination. That's it. Today's supposed to be wet down here too. Nope. Nope, no wet. What's the radar say? Oh yeah, there's nothing even on the radar, man. Not even 500 kilometres. What do these idiots do? They're public servants. What are we paying them for? Mm. Now there's only a 60% chance of showers becoming less likely late in the morning and there's nothing for 500 kilometres, so... It's less likely. (laughs) It's become not likely. It's not likely, I would Mm. say. They should look out their window. They can't. They're all blacked out. (laughs) Get a window. Open it. Ah, Robin, we miss you. Yeah, here we go. They've updated their Brisbane forecast in the last uh, 20 minutes. 10 minutes. It did say 80% chance of rain before. Now it says 20. Mm. Cloud clearing to a mostly sunny afternoon. Hmm. Thirty degrees will be nice. Then I might go for a walk. Is that on Monday or something? No, the rest of today. Thirty. Mm. Oh wow! I'm gonna head off and get some brekkie and another coffee. I think. Yeah, well, we're just about time. Yeah, we are. Doing metal on two more helmets and triggers of crossbows and we're done. It amazes me how you paint so fast. I mean, it really does. You've done these blokes in two hours, effectively. Hmm. Well, they're not done. They're, they're a long way from done, but... Base yeah. colours. Yeah. Okay. Another hour or so, probably, before 
we I source them and then another couple of hours of basing and highlighting and spraying well, with semi gloss matte coat. I'm just saying, you know, it takes me a hell of a lot hell of a lot longer than three hours to get my base colours on. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so <clears throat> Uh, but I'm not pushing out a thousand a year, <laughs> and I'm not taking a heck of a lot of heck of a lot of trouble with these guys. Like I'm banging these out because they only need to be tabletop quality, and I've got other things to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm dearly hoping that RPE get that box in the mail soon so they can get onto their cavalry because you know the intermediate rules are sort of centered around cavalry and charges and things like that so i got uh, some yeah. cavalry you got some cavalry yeah i got a bunch of this thack. i've got some um some fain stuff i haven't done yet and i've got some quite a lot of dark elf as well mm. I'm looking for a change. Maybe I should do some cavalry next. People have a fear of painting horses. I don't understand yeah, I why. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah. It's real. The fear is real. The fear is real. They get that rage up. Those ponies are fair game, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we still got to get that on a t-shirt. It's on a t-shirt. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll catch you guys uh, next weekend. Yep. Thanks, Clee. Right. See Have you. Have a good day. one. Cheers. Evening. Hey, Richard. How are you? Uh, glad my eyes are finally adjusting. Had a uh, diabetic eye exam earlier, and they dilated the shit out of my eyes. Oh, you're right. That's not good fun. Yeah, more so when you're the one driving yourself. <laughs> <laughs> driving home is entertaining, to say the least. Oh, what leather did I do their boots, Matty? I have to go and find out. I can't remember. When in doubt, snake bite. Yeah, I just used snake bite on the jerkins, so. Well, then, Wildwood. Yeah, it's possible. Might have been the uh, Rail Path of Leather. Yeah, probably would have been. I'll have a quick look. But we're going to wrap this up anyway, I think. No game today for you? Uh, apparently not. <laughs> you haven't heard? Not yet. Not yet. So I doubt it'll happen. Yeah. Yeah, Max these... is sitting there playing Borderlands 3. Right. I'm like, Hmm, Borderlands 3 or Shadowrun. Yeah. Borderlands 2 I could understand blowing off Shadowrun 4, but not 3. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're, they're the path of leather for those. So obviously did those in the diagonal strap at the same time. That'll it's be later. Good That'll be later. So yeah, they're, no, they're probably about halfway. You'll still have to finish this weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's... You know, in order to be able to advertise the live stream, I kind of have to have finished miniatures. It doesn't work otherwise. Actually, it doesn't work anyway. But, you know, we've got to try. We've had four people. What? Not counting yourself. On, on the stream today? Yeah, well, commenting, at least. Right. People have people have stuck their heads in and said, "Yep." So yeah, uh, Grant's been listening. I didn't know he was. Yeah. And there we are. It's ten o'clock. Or near enough to it. That or doesn't near matter. Near enough to it. Have a great weekend, Maddie. Same to you.
Uh, and it's Richard and, and Grant Richard. and everyone else who's listening to this after the fact. Yeah. For the short time I joined y'all. Oh, that's... You've been here since the start. Yeah. Just not on voice. Uh, and I, yeah, to see what I can do about that other camera. Oh, that's next week's project. No All right. one wants to see my Warhammer face. <laughs> I'm I'm looking a bit like um, the the wild man of painting at the moment. I haven't had a haircut since before I went to the US, so I'm going to be doing that very shortly because don't want to scare our visitors. Clippers number two. Oh, I don't. Oh, put a, go. I don't put a guard on them. It's just clippers. <laughs> <laughs> right folks see you next week <laughs>